Frankston Dolphins are back in action this Sunday night from 6.30pm at Chermside Park when they take on the Sydney Swans. Join Mick, Jonty, Polly and myself, Brendan, for all the action on RPPFM, your Peninsula footy. And a huge welcome to Werribee's Chermside Park Avalon Airport Oval on a crisp and clear Sunday night. An unusual time to be playing football, but we're certainly looking forward to uh, what should be a cracking game as the Sydney Swans aim to just resurrect their uh, finals hopes after, after a great win this afternoon in the AFL. They'll come in with big confidence and they're taking on the rejuvenated Frankston Dolphins who head over to Chermside Park with an opportunity to go through 12 rounds of this competition in the top eight if they can get up and have a big win tonight. I'm Brendan Rhodes with you on RPPFM and the ground, the ground looks in fantastic condition. Both teams are warming up and joining me here on what's going to be a very cool night, in fact, is a very good evening to Ollie Walker-Peel. Yeah, evening, Brendan. As you say, clear night, very unusual time to be playing uh, air for football, but, you know, VFL still going on. It'll be a 6.30 start, which is unusual for a Sunday night, but Sydney having a good day in the AFL, I think, con uh, continue adding more reserves, so that's the best to do it. Thanks very much, Ollie. Also with us here in the in the box beside me, it's uh, probably the best special comments man in the business at the moment. <laughs> it's a very good evening to Michael O'Neill. Thanks, Brendan. And as you mentioned, uh, you, you just can't escape the fact that it's a chilly night here. Looking at the forecast, it's 10 degrees at the moment, but could get as low as 7 degrees here tonight. And a fascinating matchup, which we're going to go into more detail later, but the Sydney Swans with probably... sides that probably overall look fairly evenly matched. Yes, and plus a couple of uh, interesting uh, inclusions in the selected team the other night. Senior players from other clubs uh, who, who were on the bye this weekend getting an opportunity coming over uh, and filling in. We'll, uh, we'll check things. So Frankston, they've obviously started the season 3-0 and and they've won one of their last five. So a really good opportunity to make some changes. So it'll be good to see how they go against this Sydney outfit. Of course, this game was originally scheduled to be played at the SCG. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the COVID situation around the country means that uh, the Swans and, of course, all the other AFL teams are back here in Melbourne. for offering up the facilities uh, here tonight uh, to, to come here for a game of football so close to Cadinia Park and make it easy for, for everybody. Um, not so much for Frankston. I'm sure they would have loved to have picked up an extra home game, but, uh, but yeah, they've still got a golden opportunity tonight, Frankston.
pes pesa nga mala vai pesa le amen singa le na le wa su mar chas minu chu chu ale chu lai ono i mel pone us ta lia us mai fa fong ai cha chu chal fo mal le chu fa vao malo i musila So he'll provide some size. Then you've got the Mosquito Fleet as well. Blake O'Leary coming back in. Ash Cracker, Jack Mentha, and Josh Stern. Yeah, and, and not to pump his tyres up too much, but Liam Reedy, he is listed at 204 centimetres coming out of East Brighton. He's an untapped talent. He's a guy that showed uh, he was a, uh, a late introduction to the Frankston team and the pre-season this year. seeing uh, I like seeing opportunities uh, come up for players that might, mightn't be on their um, primary list but uh, there is a Frankston connection uh, there with Austin Johnson his coach at Cheltenham is delicate Des Ryan yep. the former Richmond player who then post his AFL career went on to win a best and senior best and fairest Frankston and famously coached a reserves premiership side in 1997 he's a big advocate we saw a write-up on him earlier in the year where Des was uh, quite quite promising in his praise, saying that he's got AFL traits yep. um, and and that in the right system we could see him developing really well. But, but but it's this time of the year that you start to see some players off the sub list get an opportunity, and I think this ground will probably suit his style of play, and let, let's see what he brings to the table. Jai Florin, another sub list uh, elevation. He's an emergency tonight, but... Obviously, the fact that his emergency shows that he is getting close to senior selection. He's out of Old Mentone, the brother of Sydney Swan, Ollie Florent. Um, I suppose the other selections to touch on are Bill Mackay. Um, he's had a bit of a, you know, he's been in and out of the senior side. He's been travelling emergency a couple of times. Uh, his local um, side's Old Halebury, so a bit hard for him to get continuity. But it'll be good to see what he can offer tonight. And be good to see, like you say, how much time Mitch Cox spends in the midfield, Josh Begley and... And Connor Riley, another one who's really showed his class in there in the last couple of weeks. And the other notable omission we probably haven't touched on is uh, Kai Owens, who's played every yep. game this season as a um, as a centre half forward or, or, or tall forward. Um, he's been serviceable, but uh, clearly, uh, given some of the forward struggles that Frankston have had in the last two or three weeks, uh, they're looking for a, a little bit of a different mix. But for those fans of Kai, he'll, he'll be back in the senior side fairly soon. Yeah, and his brother, Mitch, doing great things down at Sandy Dragons as well. Now we'll look at some VFL results. Or before we do look at VFL results, probably worth mentioning that we will be joined by Kai Owens and Jai Florin in commentary at halftime. So be good to hear about how they're going. Uh, in terms of VFL results throughout the round, Geelong got up over Essendon easily on Friday night, as you probably would have expected, 16-6-102 to Essendon, 3-9-27. So they've still had just the one win of the season, Essendon, I think that was against Frankston. Two wins of the season, I'm being told. Box Hill, 15-21-111, beat Gold Coast, 5-9-39. Coburg got up against Carlton, 15-9-99 to 9-8-62, the Northern Blues, that is. The Northern Bull Ants, this was the big result of the round, Mick. Getting up for their Second win of the season after beating the Northern Blues last week. They got up 8-7-55 against Richmond, 5-12-42. We did talk about this game during the week, Johnny. Did I yeah. tip an upset 
in the Northern Ballot. You didn't point. You didn't tip, tip an upset? I, I thought I said that wouldn't be surprised if they win, but that's a huge win. And, and as, mean you tip. <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as I'm getting some nice feedback in the commentary box here about my tipping, but, but as a supporter of the VFL competition in general, it is such a fantastic story to see them coming up with back-to-back wins. The, the emotion of last week's game against Carlton and that win, and, and if anyone saw the social media, the photos, the singing of the song on the Northern Bullheads website, it was just so encouraging. But for them to back it up against a quality side in, in Richmond, who had a good good list in, uh, it, it was so encouraging. And to Josh Fraser, I think it's Steve Inick who's done, down there who's done such good work off the field, it must be so um, encouraging for them to see that they're getting on-field results uh, that might be a little bit of ahead of where everyone expected them to be. 14 minutes away from the first bounce. Another, probably three big results. Upset, certainly, in the GWS Giants beating Casey by one point yesterday. They got up 8 7 to Casey, 7 12 Like you say, or we were talking about off-air, Mick, how quality Casey are. Got lots of AFL talent in there, but GWS getting the chocolates. Yeah, it's really a really interesting result for me. I was down at Casey Fields with the great... Uh, Brendan Rhodes, during the day yesterday uh, for a VFLW final, the conditions were cold. Uh, we saw that Casey had a very, very strong list in. I think they had 19 or so <laughs> AFL, 17 AFL listed players in. And, and you looked at that and thought, given their form, they've been undefeated up until that point. The only sort of saving grace uh, on paper you looked at was Jesse Hogan and um, Jake, Jake Riccardi Kane. being the key forwards was a chance to potentially... Uh, and potentially upset up forward. And, and Stephen Canilio, it's rare having a AFL captain play at, at VFL level. And that obviously uh, had a strong impact. And that's a fantastic win for the Giants. Collingwood got up 81-63 to against the Sandy Zebras. They almost pulled off a massive comeback. I know, Ollie, you were very nervous in the commentary boxes. The Saints are up by 47 points in the AFL. Only ended up winning that one by less than two goals. Oh, it's the life of a Saints fan, isn't it? Up yep. by eight goals plus and still only managing to win that by a goal and a half but a win is a win and up to saying it's pretty much Johnsy so have that so, so and I think we have to give credit to Craig Black who's the VFL coach at Collingwood yep. yeah um, definitely we've followed him closely obviously he's got a, a Frankston connection but his side I think they're five and two now um, going along really nicely yeah. uh, at, and we got to see them live last week obviously the Frankston Collingwood game and they're playing a really strong system uh, they've got good young talent from the AFL playing in the uh, in the VFL, but it, it, it's they're not overwhelming sides with talent. It's their system and the way they move the ball that's so impressive. So well, well done well done to Craig Black, and we, we've always followed the Peninsula boys that are going around. Sam Fowler kicked a couple, and Campbell Husswaite played well as well. So yeah, Collingwood didn't get up in the AFL, but they got up in the VFL by 18 points against Sandy, and then Footscray getting up, as you'd expect, against North Melbourne. North Melbourne have been going well, and they pushed them. They only got up by nine points, Footscray. So impressed with how the last month or so has gone for North Melbourne. It has coincided uh, with the improvement at AFL level of the North Melbourne senior side, and we're seeing a number of players starting to come back from injury uh, coming through the North Melbourne VFL side, the one that stands out is Jared Polak, who, mm. who played his second game back from injury in the VFL on the weekend. 27 touches the first week, 30 touches and a goal this week, and the class ball use that he brings to that side obviously has an impact. But but you can't take a winning's winning. Yep. Uh, and Footscray remain undefeated on the season, and uh, the, the, we're yet to see a side I think that. Looks like they can challenge them. But this time of the year, we're into the depths of winter. It's it's June going into July. We're in July now. That's when injuries start to come to the fore. But it's also when wins this time of year at all levels are so valuable. Uh, it's, it's time for teams to try and bank wins in the lead up to the finals. Uh, and it's never easy. Just as tonight's game in the colds, it's not going to be easy for either side. Uh, but these are the wins that, that really count at the end of the year. Absolutely. We saw Robin McCoon play really well against Frankston just before the lockdown. I know all of us, are, as the siren wings, I know all of us at RWP were impressed with Robbie McCoon's game. He accumulated 28 touches and kicked a goal. Now looking at the ladder, like you mentioned, Footscray on top of the ladder undefeated. And they are now the only undefeated side. Southport second, 7-1. and one. Box Hill have gone up to third. They're 7-2. and two, And Casey, 6-1. and one. Mick? Yeah, and we start to see uh, the, the sort of top side starting to separate yep. them, themselves from the rest of the competition. In front of us, Frankston have come out for the pre-game warm-up with 10 minutes to the first bounce. But, yeah, Footscray, very impressive. Um, Southport, 
you look at the first, the top four sides, all with the percentages, top five sides, all with a percentage of 163 or better. That shows that they're they're really starting to dom- dominate games. So there, there's an opportunity we mentioned at the top of the show for Frankston tonight to push themselves uh, back into the eight. But the, the top four sides or top three sides are really starting to uh, separate themselves from the pack, and it's going to take a, a, a team to get on a run, a, a streak to really challenge those top sides. And just to touch on who that chasing pack is, you've got Geelong, Williamstown, Collingwood and GWS rounding out the top eight, where we'll be in four and three there in ninth position, and then Frankston tonight are in tenth position there, four and four. But as you said, they'll jump into the eight. It's on wor- percentage if they get the win. Yeah, and it's worth touching on, on Sydney Swans as they come into this game with a 2-6 and six record. But the most telling thing for me is their percentage is 91.6, mm. which to me indicates they're a better side uh, than what their win-loss record shows. And they've had a couple of opportunities this year to, to close out wins that they mightn't have. So uh, they'll be looking to, to uh, start to get some more wins in the ledger. Uh, starts tonight. Jack Berry's just walked up to watch the game in front of us, which reminds me that he's an out for tonight for Frankston. So James Rendell will take care of the ruck. And I know how much you like watching his ruck work, Mick. He's got his work cut out against Callum Sinclair. Uh, absolutely. But so, so when you look on paper, the Sinclair-McLean combination stands out as a, as a potential match winner for the Sydney Swans tonight. But James Rendell, I think he's a, he's a really willing ruckman at 200 centimetres. Yep. I, I find that he, he plays his best football when he... When he it's a bit like Todd Goldstein and, at North Melbourne. He likes to ruck all day. When Rendell's given responsibility as the sole ruckman, he normally performs well. And and what he's uncompromising in is his effort and his attack on the football. So on nights like tonight where the contest is going to be critical, I, I think it gives him an opportunity to try and be physical with Callum Sinclair early. Mm. I, I expect Sinclair will try and push forward and expose him uh, as a... Um, inside forward 50, he's got an uncanny ability to get on the score sheet as a um, as a ruckman, uh, and so I think that's going to be probably the standout battle for us to look to look at tonight, and it's one that's going to actually have a fair influence on the result. Yeah, it will. Well summed up. But as we as we go into um, you know now seven minutes in, until game time. I'm just going to pass over to you, Ollie. Yeah, we're just going to take a very, very quick break before the start of play. Just a f- couple of ads to hear from our sponsors, and then we'll be back from Chernside Park with the first quarter here between Sydney and the Franks and Dolphins. You're listening to RWPFM, your Peninsula Football. of Australia and at Solar Heart we're proud to be leading the charge one home one family one solar panel at a time helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future get smart get Solar Heart more and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats yeah. Spit Hire for 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. And welcome back here to Avalon Airport Oval Churnside Park. The TV Magic 
put game of the night, who could say, on Sunday night football on uh, RPP FM, thanks to Bendigo Bank, another great station sponsor of ours. It is the Sydney Swans preparing to take on the Frankston Dolphins in a critical match to the, uh, to the outcome of this season. Frankston looking for a spot in the eight. Sydney with their last roll of the dice. And I heard you mention before the break uh, about the Swans' percentage as I allow Mick to... Uh, to talk about the AFL-listed players lining up for the Swans tonight. Yeah, there were a couple of occasions. Uh, Geelong was one. Southport was another. Gold Coast was another, where they had strong leads at uh, at three-quarter time and got overrun on every occasion. So uh, very good for three quarters. Uh, just watch whether they can actually finish a game off because that's been their problem. And I think that's pertinent for tonight as well. As we've mentioned, there's a number of... Uh, players from other clubs or from NAB League clubs uh, in the Swan side tonight. So so it is going to be a challenge for how they gel and how they go late in the game. But I keep I, I did have a lot of people talk to me about who was favourite for this game and Frankson being strong favourites. But if I look at the eight AFL-listed players that are playing for the Swans tonight, Caden Brand's a fantastic backman. I really rate him as a player. I thought he'd play more really, AFL football. Really unlucky, I reckon, to keep getting dropped all the time. Absolutely. Dylan Stevens and Ryan Clark both young guns. You can almost mark uh, Clark down for 30-plus possessions tonight, as you probably would for Nathan Freeman as well, but he just finds the ball at will at this level. Will Gould is a highly touted Shannon Hearn-style backman that hasn't really broken into the Sydney Swans side yet, but I still think he's top class. Callum Sinclair, we've mentioned, we expect him to be first ruck and also go forward. Ben Ronk, I think, is a big loss for yep. Sydney today. I couldn't find a, a a matchup for for Frankston to play on him, so they'll be breathing a sigh of relief. But then you look at former Brisbane player and, and rising star winner Lewis Taylor, Colin O'Reardon and Hayden McLean, who impresses me so much at AFL level. It seems like the AFL side are reluctant to play him and Buddy Franklin in the same forward line. Well, McLean's spot's been taken by Joel Amati, who, who actually played a blinder today. So Yeah, it's an embarrassment of Richmond's... Aside from the VFL side of things, I wouldn't be surprised if another AFL club comes knocking at Hayden McLean's door at the end of the year. But but again, you look at him at 197 centimetres, 97 kilos. Frankson's problem as a defensive unit has been finding matchups for the big forwards. So he looms large over this game. For, for Frankston, as we look through their list, the, the sort of constants we've seen this year, Jonty, Josh Newman, uh, Nathan Freeman, Connor Riley. Mitch Cox, those guys, it's it's imperative that they have good games tonight. And we do touch on Josh Bigley as a bit of a barometer for Franks inside. They'll need strong contributions from their better players tonight. Just quickly, where would you be playing him more forward or midfield, Josh Begley? Uh, Begley, I'd have him alongside Liam Reedy in the goal square to start the game. Uh, I, I think they need to take advantage inside 50. But both sides now have broken from their finals captain's address and heading out into their respective positions. So It looks like Sydney's going to be kicking to the river end or the northern end of the ground. Caden Brand, Colin O'Reardon, the captain, heading down back along with uh, Nathan Cooper. And we see Sinclair lining up in the ruck. We see Dylan Clark, Louis Taylor, and it looks like uh, Dylan Stevens in in the centre square for City. Such, such a strong uh, centre square group for uh, Sydney to start the game. Hayden McLean goes to full forward for the Swans with five uh, five top-up players. And Billy McCormack with that match-up, it looks like. No, it's, uh, it's Williams who's oh, gone Williams. to McLean there, just a, a kick out from the goal square. So that's a big one for Max Williams. So we're just about set in the centre of the ground for the start of this game. It's the Frankston Dolphins against the Sydney Swans. Uh, I'm picking Frankston. Anybody else? Uh, Frankston to buy a kick. Frankston buy a kick. Dolphin all the way around. It's Callum Sinclair in the ruck up against Rendell. And we're just about set. The umpire slams it down. We're underway on Sunday night football. Sinclair gets the first touch for the Swans. Little ball out. Sinclair gets it back again. Gave it across to Logan Young, who's played for North Melbourne this season. Little kick over from Josh Guthrie. Getting a chance from Coburg. He went out wide. And now the Swans can build. This was Dylan Stevens, who kicks in towards the forward pocket. And it gets away and over the line for a boundary throw-in. I think Mick and I just noticed that Mitch Cox started on a wing. Yes, and I, and I couldn't help but see Josh Guthrie there. Very similar look and kicking style to uh, his older brother at Geelong. So boundary throw-in it is. 50 metres out from the Sydney goal. As I said, kicking to the river end. Rendell probably got that touch. Quick kick away from Freeman. Goes up to the wing, but it's been chopped off. 
And the mark is taken for the Swans. That is by O'Reardon. He plays on, captaining the team tonight. Kicks into the pocket, but not a good kick. And it's been marked by Cox. So Cox got a chance to rebound. Off half back, goes for the kick wide, looking for Newman. As the ball trickles out of play. In fact, it's been called to play on it. Ahead of the whistle. Handball in board. Chance for the Swans. Lloyd back up inside 50. Up towards full forward, but clean overhead. Nearly took the mark. Thought he had it, but was fisted away from him. As the Frankston Dolphins look to clear it out of defence. First shot on goal, and the goalkeeper for Frankston marks well as they get a bit of interplay on the way out. That's Freeman coming out with the ball there. As it's marked well. by Mentha on the lead, just inside his defensive 50. Goes out wide towards centre wing. Mark dropped by Caden Brown, the former Hawk. As he looks to go inside 50, tumbling up and on the ball. Mark dropped by Frankston at full back. Handball short was from Williams. Are the real pressure at the moment here, the Dolphins. The ball chips out wide, should be marked by Jackson Voss and is. And Good Frankston looks to Williams take this thing out of the game early on. So Voss on defensive 50 for Frankston. Will bring it down towards halfback. Nicely done to Riley. And he will hold things up. So Connor Riley brings it down the wing, looking for Rendell, gets the front spot, and thumped away with authority by Will Gould. And over the line for a throw in right in front of our broadcast position. Such a strong body, Will Gould. He's listed at 100 kilos. I think he's fined up a little bit since then, but but he runs in straight lines at the footy, and that was a powerful spoil on Rendell then. Yeah, farmer's son out of country, South Australia, so he, he certainly built that way, unlike this farmer's son, that's for sure. <laughs> Boundary throw in right in front of the broadcast. Rendell gets to the front spot, won the tap down. Newman goes through, stepped around one, gave it back uh, to the advantage of Hiscock, who kicks up towards half forward. Oh, well read by O'Reardon, and the Swans captain takes the mark. Looks for the ball out wide. Mark taken by McLean, who looks to wheel and go straight away. Looks for Maris, who takes the mark. Far side centre wing. For the Swans, looking to reload it back inside 50, trying to get the first score of the game. Long ball towards Sinclair. Second grab, couldn't take it. Mark dropped over the top for Sydney. Is now Chergwin of Werribee. Ball spills out. Little kick off the boot, taken by Williams, who will look to get the Dolphins out of trouble. Nice chain of handballs. Out wide from Newman. Now to the wing. It's gone to Nathan Freeman, looking for Mentor over the back. Will it be kept in play? Not quite. First bit of involvement for the VFL debutant Liam Reedy, but can only see it over the line for a boundary throw and good true centre wing. Good to see Liam Reedy getting involved. He's going to have to work really hard tonight with not much height up forward. Him and Rendell are going to have to be those targets, Mick. Yeah, definitely. And good to see Callum Sinclair pushing hard forward there on Rendell. It's going to be a feature of tonight. So Sinclair, 44 hitouts, 21 disposals and a goal last week he had. Ryan Clark dispossessed, that's good work. Newman shrugs off a couple of tackles, has a bounce through traffic and chips to half forward. That was beautifully done Stern. into the hands of Stern. The Swans Academy graduate kicks inside 50. Tracking it back is Gould also there. Cracker off the ground. That looked Almost like it was kicked going a through. miracle. And the Swans were able to get back on the last line of defence. The first score of the night is Frankston's, their first forward foray. One behind, Sydney yet to score after four minutes. I read an impressive early in this game. I really like him as a player and a beautiful kick as well as he gets the ball again. Speak the devil, he marks and handballs out wide as the Swans look to clear. Down by a point early on here at Avalon Airport Oval. Far side centre wing, mark dropped as the ball... Looks to break free, but won't do so. Locked in, stoppage, far side centre wing, four and a half minutes gone. Dolphins up by a solitary point on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. What we've seen early is uh, Fr Frankston winning plenty of the ball in the back half, but not able to maintain it inside their forward line going forward. So there's a challenge for them already. Sinclair wins the clearance. He got it back through the hands of Josh Guthrie. Then the kick goes towards half forward. Logan Young. He's from Sandy Dragons. Colin Young, son. Young kicks up towards half forward. Arriving was McLean. He had to punch from behind. Strong tackle laid by the young swan there in Fraser Maris. Quick kick out of defence came from the Dolphins. That was from Brolick up towards the wing. Still a chance for Frankston here, but the umpire will call for a ball up right on centre wing. We saw last week Frankston struggled on the wings, but early in this game we're seeing uh, Mitch Cox and Nathan Freeman both pushing hard back defensively and picking up possessions. Sinclair wins the tap out of the rock, down to Ryan Clark as the Swans look to get it moving forward again. Nice work through the middle, but it's coughed up as Newman will look to work it forward for the Dolphins. Long ball inside 50 on the lead is Mentha. It's over his head. Was he impeded? Umpire says no. 
As the pack of players converging over the top of the ball, it looks like the Swans have won out. Quick little chip kick to the advantage of Logan Young, who finds Caden Brand off hands. Kick across the face of goal is a calculated one. As the Swans have the ball at full back, chipping ball is marked by Boyd. As that ball is poor and there's a mark here for Franks is up to work the ball forward through Connor Riley at left half forward. Mark just inside 50. Probably too far out to score one with sense as he's been called to play on. Chipping ball. It's a good one. And a real chance for Frankston to get the opening goal of the game here. Uh, someone forgot to tell the Swans about Frankston's set play there. Yeah, that's true. We didn't get a, man a chance to mention that. But tactically, early in this game, what's important to, to point out is that the Sydney Swans are allowing Frankston an extra player up at the stoppage. And what that is doing is giving them a free player in their defensive area. And it's either Will Gould or O'Reed. And, and it's already having a strong impact in the game, albeit Cox gets a chance to uh, put the first goal on the board. Mitch Cox with five goals against the, Franks, uh, against the Northern Bull Ants. In a star-studded performance a couple of weeks ago, will kick from about 30 out, left of centre, angle to speak of, and it's missed to the right. So a couple of behinds early on for the Dolphins. They move to no goals, two, two, two behinds rather. Sydney yet to score seven minutes gone. Ray White Franks the scoreboard. So Gould to bring it back in. He goes low and direct down the middle, and it's beautifully picked off by Austin Johnson for his first passage of play in VFL football. He read that beautifully. Hasn't he gone back with confidence here for, for a guy playing his first game? We mentioned him in the, in the pre-game. He looks like he's got the... He looks confident. He's going to kick from 48, 49, but he looks like he's confident with the distance. He started on the bench and he just ran on to get that ball. So Johnson will kick from 50 metres out directly in front. Right on the paint. He's kicked it pretty well, but it's just fading across to the right. And another missed opportunity for the Dolphins. They are three behinds. Sydney yet to score on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. Nearly eight minutes gone. Had a chance to join the famous first kick, first, first goal yep. club. First touch, first goal. As Gould looks towards the far side wing, fisted into the centre as the Swans will look to capitalise. Maybe should have marked the ball, but didn't, in, didn't end up doing so. Nice shade of handball through the middle. Ferocious tackle from Connor Riley and is rewarded he is on the in far a rich, side wing. He's in a rich vein of form. His, his opening to this game has been electric. That's the sort of stuff he was doing last week against Collingwood as well. Connor handball to the middle and that's a good mark from Caden Brand over the top who will look to chip it out wide. Logan Young goes wider to Sam Clessy. He's had a good start, Logan Young. He's, he played a game for North Melbourne and played for Sydney last week. Didn't get a lot of touches. He's had a bit of the ball early. Goes long down the line. Pack of players underneath the ball. None of them unable to able to take the ball as it goes long from Ashcracker. And it's missed away towards the boundary line on this near side. Out of play for a boundary throw in at half forward for the Dolphins. It's his first game and, and he hasn't had a possession yet, but I really like uh, Liam Reedy's strength in the contest then. He was opposed either to Brand or Will Gould. He was out of position. And that's one thing in the limited game time we've seen is he can compete for the footy and bring it to ground, which will be great for the Frankston Smalls. He is a big unit, that's for sure, Liam Reedy, as Sinclair had a couple of goes and missed them both. Riley, good little hand pass up. Cox is gone. He took a little bit too long. He didn't get rid of it cleanly, said the umpire. The advantage is not coming to Sydney, it wasn't there, so Will Gould will get the free kick. He had the shake and bake there, uh, Mitch Cox got the uh, shake, but not the bake. He yeah, managed to get past the first one, didn't he, uh, as Stevens marks the short ball. Number five draft pick a couple of years ago, Dylan Stevens goes short to Ryan Clark. Two Clarks in the Swans team tonight, Joshua the other one from the Eastern Rangers. He went back to Stevens, who was dealt with after he got rid of the ball, so it'll be a downfield free kick here. What's the umpire picking out? And it's going to be blood rule. There's a bit of a head, there was a head clash too. Ryan Clark comes in and has a bit to say to Hiscox before he goes off for the blood rule. Stevens might have some blood as well. No, he signaled a, yes, yeah, so it's a 50 metre penalty because Stevens was dealt with after he got rid of the ball and dealt with in a head clash matter. So Hiscox come, Hiscock comes off with the blood rule. Stevens runs to 50, has a flying shot at goal. It's swinging back. Not enough. And one behind. You, you know him well, uh, Brendan. He's a beautiful left foot kick. I think he's going to have a long and productive AFL career. He just accumulates. But like all left footers, they just look, look like natural kicks. Yeah, once he, once he works his way into that team, he'll be there for a long time. One behind Sydney, three behind Frankston after ten and a half minutes. Ray White, Frankston scoreboard. Arthurson in from fullback, fisted away to the far side boundary line by Will Gould. 
And, so a throw in. Just and we, we spoke before the game, Frankston going with it, sort of a one tall forward. What we've found is a number of their full rays going forward already. They've been kicking to uh, Mentha in a marking contest. Uh, uh, McLaughlin, Brody McLaughlin's got the matchup with Brand, which is a really tough matchup at times. So they're going to have to find different avenues going forward. Sinclair down to Rendell as the ball's forward for Frankston. Mark drops. It should have been taken as the Swans look to move their way forward. Handball into the middle of the ground is for Logan Young. Looks to go wider, looking to find Keys who picks the ball up. Handball over the top, finds Stevens. Little shake and bake, approaches 50. Handball in board. Louis Taylor goes one further on. A heap of Frankston players around the ball. The tackling, tackling pressure tells four Frankston players against one swan and holding the ball free kick, well deserved. Yeah, Sam Clowesy on debut just dropped that cold as soon as he was tackled there, Mick. Yeah, Louis Taylor loved the shot on goal. Thought he was oh, going. look out, kick was chopped off by Clark. He couldn't quite get a handle on it. The Dolphins will still clear. Do good use of the body there by O'Leary, and away he goes. Kicks up towards half forward, puts it in the path of McLaughlin, who can get a kick away. Inside forward 50, it goes. How will it bounce? It takes the off break and goes out of bounds. And good decision by the umpire, despite the protestations of Cade and Brand say, uh, calling for deliberate out of bounds. That was just the bounce of the ball. I read the result. ball really well there. Blake O'Leary needed to as well, because obviously, like you say, he's a small in a marking contest and able to advance it inside 50. And a good result there for Frankson, because they did have loose defenders behind the footy, which is it's a real standout in this first quarter for Sydney. Th throw in, taken right off. Um, forward for the Dolphins, but the Swans look to clear. It's going to go back from whence it came. Long ball inside 50 to the top of the square. Off hands. The Swans can't clear. On hands and knees was Caden Brand, who's swarmed upon by multiple Dolphins, but in the end at the top of the square will have a stoppage at almost at full forward for the Franks and Dolphins as they look to get their first goal of the game. Really clean hands from Jay Lloyd, able to get a repeat inside 50 for Frankston. Scoring chance here for Frankston, but O'Reardon just throws it on the boot. Fires it out towards 50. That was good piece of play here by Frankston. Johnson, Working hard. No, it's Voss, I think. And away he goes. Couldn't get it clear, but it, but it was picked up by Newman. Was he dealt with as he kicked the ball? The umpire said no, but it came Great off goal. hands. The Swans dropped the footy. Freeman. And Nathan Freeman, who doesn't kick many goals, has kicked a beauty there right there. And Frankston get the first. They're 1-3-9. Sydney, one behind. 13 minutes gone. Ray White, Frankston scoreboard. Yeah, you're not wrong, Brendan. He doesn't kick a lot of goals, but he kicked one last week against Collingwood. He was able to get on the end of one in the goal square. And again, um, sorry, not Collingwood. Sydney not able to take the mark despite the superior height in the forward line and able to get it to ground Frankston and get their first goal. Yeah, just, yeah, just Mick, sorry, Mick, his second goal of the season and only his 11th in 52 VFL games. And Newman with the inside 50 there was dealt with by Hayden McLean after after the kick. A bit of uh, push and shove uh, off the ball there. But I did want to point out um, Liam Reedy's now had four marking contests where he hasn't been outmarked. He, he, at the moment, he's the only avenue... Uh, that's able to create a contest. So Sydney Swans should have their eye on that. They're going to kick to him as much as they can. As always, the goal kicker comes off. Nathan Freeman on the interchange. And, and Dylan Stevens has gone down into the rooms with the trainer for Swan supporters. He didn't look like he was carrying anything, but we'll see uh, what happens there. As the ball goes to half forward, Sinclair picks it up, tumbles it into the pocket. One-on-one -on -one contest here. Trying to get clear. Uh, there was uh, Max Ted who couldn't. The umpire calls for a ball up about 48 metres out from the Sydney goal. We see uh, O'Reardon leading all comers with eight possessions, as we always expect Freeman leading the way for Frankston with uh, seven possessions and a goal. Sinclair down to Newman, who was absolutely crunched. And he's not coming out of there in a hurry. There's not a game goes by that that doesn't happen to Newman. He's uncompromising in his attack on the footy. And uh, what, a, what a good captain he is for Frankston. Ball left half forward from the Swans. Sinclair wins it down. Was ahead of Clark, who couldn't get there as it's cleared away. Up towards Mentha for Frankston. Mark dropped. In the end by Witherden. Handball over the top as O'Reardon looks to run away. Ball towards Clark, but he won't get there. Brolic will sweep up. Handball short. Found Mackay out wide. Oh, it would be marked by Voss. Tight to the boundary line. Goes for a short kick down the line. As Frankston looks to get numbers four. The umpire spotted a 50. And that will take the Dolphins from center wing right outside. The 50 metre arc as they look to get their second goal of the game. And Real put some scoreboard pressure on the Swans. It looked like that was uh, movement off the. Uh, it was movement off the. the stand rule. Standing, Broke the stand standing rule. on the mark. 
So it'll I've be a chance on goal for the uh, uh, for the for the Dolphins for the here Dolphins. from a mistake by the Swans. Yeah. So it'll be right on 50, sl ever so slightly left of centre. As the Dolphins look to get their second on the board. A hop turns into a skip, into a jump, kick looks on line, and it's there. Great kick on goal, and they all get around him. It's Liam Reedy by the looks of things. And the Dolphins have got their second on board. Celebrations are jubilant. Dolphins move to 2 3 15 on the Ray White Frankson scoreboard, playing Joe, Sydney with a solitary behind. Is it Joe Lloyd or no, Harry, Loughnan. Harry, Harry Loughnan that we've, uh, as he runs back, like all defenders that kick a goal, look at the spring in his step as he runs back to his position. And he put in a really good effort earlier after that centre, centre bounce after Frankston kicked their first goal. Got to a couple of contests. It's good to see him reward in his second game of AFL footy. And I think it, you, you can't help think the Dolphins would be pleased with this start. The, the Swans' better players are getting their hands on the footy. The French defence has held up really well uh, early in this uh, first quarter. So it was Harry Lockman who kicked his first VFL goal in his second game. So congratulations to him. Didn't have to wait too long to get on the scoreboard and a big goal for Frankston as this bounce is called back. 14 points the margin on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard for Frankston. Seven inside 50s apiece, Frankston making the most of their opportunities. Rendell judged that better and then stole it from Clark. Ryan Clark and kicks it inside 50. Back with oh. the fly to the ball. Gould has had a ripper start for the Swans. He's uncompromising, never takes his eyes off the footy. Chips it short, that's good. Finds Taylor. He'll go around the defensive 50-metre line for O'Reardon. Wants to go. Now he's got himself a bit of a problem. Gave the hand pass off to Brand, who's gotten rid of the long sleeves already. Must be warmer than we think out there. And the Frankston forward, uh, forward pressure has created the ball over the line for a boundary throw-in. Looks like, was that O'Leary over that far side? He looks like a small player. I think it was O'Leary putting the pressure on there, and that's a good result. A stoppage in the forward half. So left half forward for Frankston. Rendell goes up with Sinclair. Sinclair wins it down, but couldn't make it to an advantage for his teammates. Freeman on the edge of 50, goes towards the top of the square. Going back with the fly, Gould again. Unable to take this one this time. It falls to the back. Kept in play. Cracker over the top. And he can't quite get a shot on goal that he decided. Clearing kick is smothered. Ball locked in. Will it find its way out? Yes, it will. Locked in yet again. And somehow the Swans have managed to smuggle it clear just about. Clearing kick isn't a great one, and it's marked by Jackson Voss. Left footer here. He looks like he's going back to have a shot. Maybe a few more metres out, Brendan, than the standard set play we normally see from here, but you'd expect him to back himself for a shot on goal. No, nah, he's definitely close enough to kick the distance here. Uh, the, the set play usually comes from about 15 metres further out than that, I think. A good pressure, though. Great to see Frankston. Louis Taylor looked like he was going to clear that football easily, but the pressure in the lead-up to that, there was a couple of smothers. Was it Billy McKay had one? Uh, really good pressure to, to force a scrappy kick out. Will kick from about 30 metres out on an angle. Jackson Voss goes back. Looks good off the boot. And the goal umpire barely moves. Excitement from the Fraxton bench. And it is definitely, definitely merited. The, bot, the Dolphins have got three on the board. That 3-3-21. Playing Sydney with the, only the solitary behind. 19 and a half minutes gone first term. The Ray White Frankston scoreboard. And hopefully club photographer Matt Walker's got a good photo of that. He's probably one of the more photogenic players in the team, Jackson Voss, <laughs> with his hair. And, yes. And, 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 again, a, and again, a first VFL goal in yeah. game number four. So well done to Jackson Voss. Absolutely. And we, we, what we're seeing is Frankston are finding avenues to goal here. We, we often wonder with Bailey Lambert not on the side, are they going to find a way to kick a winning score? Uh, but they're finding different avenues to goal here, which is fantastic. Yeah, so three unlikely avenues so far. Two maiden goal kickers plus Nathan Freeman, who usually sets them up rather than kicks them. Bounce of the ball is pretty good in the middle. Sinclair, oh, hits the ground hard. Rendell picks up the loose ball. Just uh, Yes, that's a high fend has been picked out against uh, Rendell to Clark. I think that was just his height. Gave it across to Taylor, who kicks into the pocket. He's looking for Tyler Watts who plays his football here at Werribee. Hasn't had a senior game yet for the Tigers this year, but did play three in 2019. It's we, over the line. We saw Sinclair with a huge leap and fall there and, and got the knee into Rendell. Rendell got the ball, and I think there was a bit of anger from the, from the uh, ruck contest there for Rendell and just got his opponent high. 
So boundary throw in half forward for Sydney. Rendell and Sinclair. Rendell got to the front spot. A strong tackle laid uh, by Josh Guthrie. Brought the ball to ground. Dolphins still with possession, however, and the kick goes up towards the wing. O'Reardon takes a very good mark in the front spot for the Swans. Coming up for his 11th possession. He's leading all comers. He's going so well. I'm not sure why he can't get back in at AFL level, Brendan. It's just the the halfbacks are going so well for Sydney at the moment. There's just no room for him, but he certainly does a job when he gets the opportunity. He went short to Taylor, who kicked almost into the man on the mark, but he just got it through to Clark. Ryan Clark sets it up towards full forward. McLean was maybe held back. Umpire didn't agree. Begley back there. He's caught. And it'll be thrown in the air. You mentioned at the start of the pro, uh, start of the coverage that McLean was forward with five top-up players. And what we're seeing is it's either McLean or Sinclair as the target up forward. Frankston players anticipating that each time. Ball back up, Sydney at the fall of the ball. But over the top is Josh Bagley for the Dolphins. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. As no one can really get the ball out at the moment. It looks like it'll trickle over the line just about. In fact, it's held in before that can happen. And we'll have another ball up right half forward for the Swans. It was 20 points in arrears. You mentioned Josh Begley. He's been playing on the ball early in this contest. Yeah, using his strength in at the stoppages. Yep. One down by McLean. Ball still bobbling around. The umpire's picked out a free kick, and it's going the way of the Swans here. So a massive chance for them to kick their first goal of the game. It's so holding the man free. Against, uh, against Brolic there, and he's uh, pleading his argument with the umpire, but I'm yet to see any of them accept the argument and reverse the free kick. So it's Matthew Keast with a chance to go back and kick Sydney's first. Did kick one goal last week on debut as one of those NAB League top-ups for the Swans. Dunning the number 56 on his back. He goes tight to the boundary line. Will kick from about 40 out on an angle. Keys trots in and kicks it to the man on the mark. It's a shocking kick. Freeman picks up. Handball short. Will be returned to the former Saint and Magpie. Goes to Brolic. Clearing kick out of the defensive 50 for the Dolphins. As it looks like it'll trickle over the boundary. And it does forward of centre in attacking sense for the Swans. Jonty, great lesson there for, for the young players out here. Anthony Brolick didn't concede that he was out of the contest on the mark and gave it a full jump and got hands on it. Dylan yeah. Stevens back out there Absolutely. after he went down to the rooms early on. It's good to hear. Uh, couldn't blaze away and good to get a contest up on centre wing because Liam Reid is off the ground, so not a lot of height up forward for Frankston. Sinclair won it down. Hand pass from Josh Guthrie over the back. Clark kick partially smothered off the boot of Joshua Clark. Ryan Clark had another go for the Swans, and eventually it was Taylor who went an up-and-under kick towards half-forward. At the back, McLean's a chance. Cox got there first with pace. Fed it out looking for Max Williams. Bowled over by McLean. Little hand pass came back from Keast. Flying shot on goal from the Swans is off target to the near side. I think that was from Josh Guthrie, and one behind only for Sydney. We're seeing Mitch Cox work incredibly hard into the defensive 50. He's playing that style you see at AFL level like... Uh, McIntosh for Richmond, who just pushes back so hard defensively and he's providing an outlet. He must have had three or four rebound 50s already. Sydney two behinds. Frankston 3-3-21 after 24 minutes on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. Taylor has the ball back, looks to dribble one in. Good work from the Swans to win possession back. Stevens takes the ball top of the square. Handball short, should be the first goal of the Swans. It's Clark, snap on goal, and it's straight through the middle. Sydney on the board. They're one two, eight on the Ray White Frankson scoreboard, trailing the Dolphins with 3 3 21. 24 minutes gone on the Ray White Frankson scoreboard, first term. If the ball's going to go inside forward 50 for Sydney at ground level, you couldn't get two more composed players than Clark and Stevens. Max Williams would be disappointed with that kick out from fullback. He tried to thread the eye of the needle. Spillage came to ground. And whenever that happens with a kick out from fullback, there's loose players everywhere. And in the end, it's a good conversion, but a fairly simple goal for Sydney to get them on the scoreboard. And threading the eye of the needle, like we touched on, no height up the line, so had to bite off a bit of a more difficult kick. Now, James Rendell's come off the ground, so it looks like Billy McCormack will have a pinch hit in the ruck late in this first quarter. 24 minutes gone, almost 25 minutes gone. And Sinclair, the only big man for the Swans, so he's rucked unchanged in this first quarter, as has Rendell until now. So no wind advantage either way, too, if you're playing along at home. So no... Oh, no goal scoring advantage as Sinclair won another tap. Mackay dropped on the ball. He's going to plant his feet here. And he's un in trouble and he's gone. Holding the ball is the decision. Bill McCormack, in fact, rather than Bill Mackay. Fair, a fair decision, too. He was 
jumped on that ball and they just piled up knowing that there was a free kick to be had. Dylan Stevens with the free kick, gets on the left boot, drives it inside 50. Here comes McLean, jumps high, couldn't take Louis. the mark. Taylor gets through, tapped it to his own advantage. That is brilliant football from Lewis Taylor. And the Swans get two in a minute here at Churnside Park. They go to 2-2-14, two, two, Frankston 3-3-21. Heading towards 26 in the first quarter, Ray White Frankston scoreboard. We had a fantastic view of, of that goal there from Louis Taylor. That's his DNA. That's what he's good at, both at AFL and VFL level. But he was the first to react there. He was three or four metres off that crumb. The ball went to ground, but he changed direction so efficiently. He was through the pack without too much trouble. And if, if you give him a chance around the body from 30 metres out, he's never going to miss. What about uh, the basketball tap? <laughs> Uh, basketball dribble to get it back to him. He, was, footballs don't bounce like if that. Was Scott, Scotty Pendlebury would be talking about that for months, but that was wow. a fantastic uh, ball control then by Louis Taylor. TV magic game of the day. As I said, it's back to seven points. Frankston 21, Sydney 14. Bill McCormack opposed to Callum Sinclair. Neither one could really win out as the ball goes forward for the Swans. Clearing kick on the edge of 50. As the Dolphins should clear. Hacked kick away. Swans appeal for the deliberate before it's even gone out of play. He's they should, play. Play. They should not get it. <laughs> he, he has paid it. That is a out terrible, that's an absolutely terrible decision like most of these deliberates are. <laughs> and all the Frankston supporters and players are on the sidelines here. They're not happy about it at all. Arid and chips it short to Sam Witherden. They've he went across the face the of goal. Here. And they are open and away. The kick forward was poor and immediately put under pressure by Mitch Cox, who sweeps on the ball, picks it up, and looks for Brolic. It won't get through to him. In fact, eventually it does. Somehow it carried all the way through to him. On the outside now for the Dolphins is Ash Cracker on the far side wing. As the kick goes down the line, smothered en route, Gould, handball over the top. As it's kicked towards Stevens, it will evade him as Frankston regain possession. Brolic with a handball short, kick forward, Here's dropped by Mentha. Part of the Mosquito Fleet back in this week. Handball short, 1-2, back to Mentha, edge of 50, open goal square, and he's missed to the left. Mentha really should have done better there. But he has missed. Frankston moved to 3 4 22. Eight points in front of Sydney, who are 2 2 14 late in the first half on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. Short ball back into play, flying, finds Clark. The, uh, I think the umpires will we'll get back to that thought on that as Stevens took the mark and gave it back to Ryan Clark. Sends a kick up towards the wing. Williams over the top, knocked it away from McLean. Dolphins with the ball to send it back inside 50 from Newman. Mentha. Couldn't take the mark. Swan's defence working hard. Oh, well done. Mentha just went straight through. Tumbled a kick towards full forward. Gould read it well and then had it knocked out of his hands. Off the ground goes O'Leary. It'll trickle away towards the line and over for a throw in. Now, the the umpires, the rules, they, it's changed from being called deliberate to being called insufficient Fish intent, intent which, the which covers them to allow to pay those, those sort of decisions. Well, well, the umpire, he started his running to pay that free kick. It was melodramatic. He started the run from about 50 metres away. But but you just got to adapt to that. That's you do. The Insufficient intent, potentially it was, but certainly not delivered out of bounds. Mentha picked it up. It just landed in his lap. He had a flying shot at goal off one step and missed badly across the face. Just hit the wrong part of the ball there, Mentha, but looked really good. Had clean hands early. Well, he's actually found his mojo back as a yeah. pressure forward, and that's the thing that's going to lead to, to hit him hitting the scoreboard. He got away from that, I think, for a few rounds, but but that's his DNA, and he's been going well this quarter. Caden Brand at left full back. Goes long towards the far side centre wing. Has it gone all the way out of play? Out it has gone out on the full. And so a chance for the Dolphins to reload back inside the attacking 50, potentially the last attacking chance of the quarter. Reedy on the lead here, but he's going to have to double back and provide a contest. So the lead of... Liam Reedy was ignored as it goes long. It's in the uh, direction of Liam Reedy. Off hands, and it's gone out of play again. At left half forward, inside 50 for the Franks and Dolphins, who are up by nine at the moment. Five players in double figures for possessions. O'Reardon with 12, Freeman, Clark, Stevens and Taylor, all with 10 possessions. So the, the top class players are getting their hands on the footy in this first quarter. It's the who's who out there on the ground, isn't it, at the moment, with the footy. Ball back into play. Sinclair won the tap down. Picked up. Uh, for the Swans by Cooper. He had it ripped out of his grasp. A little tumble forward from O'Leary. Somehow Cracker got away from there. Had a flying shot. And it was touched right on the line by Caden Brand. Who saved a certain goal to Ash Cracker. The Dolphins go to 3-6-24. Sydney 2-2-14 as we tick past the half hour mark. Ray White-Frankston scoreboard. 
look a little bit wasteful on the scoreboard when you look at those nine shots of Franks, and it's been a little bit symptomatic of them. They need to get value for their inside 50s and shots. Big Ol flies. Uh, sorry, Ollie McLean dropped the mark. It's going to come straight back in. Mentha went with one hand, couldn't take the mark. Still a chance here for the Dolphins. Brolic caught. Not able to get a clear possession away. O'Leary lays the tackle uh, on the Swans player in Gould. And it'll be a ball up 45 metres out from Frankston's goal. We'll talk a little bit more at quarter time, but the Swans with big numbers behind the footy. Frankston did well there, two on four, to actually get a stoppage. Mantha over the top, looking to impart his part in the Mosquito fleet. Handball at the back. Brolic looks wider, finds Mantha. We'll have a flag shot from the boundary. Goes towards the top of the square. Big hang over the top, attempted from Cox, but he dropped the mark. Fumbled over the line in the end by Dylan Stevens, so it'll be a stoppage. Left ball forward for the Dolphins in the pocket, currently up by 10. Good. We approach the uh, quarter time siren. Good two or three minutes for Mentha without actually kicking a goal. It is, and we've, seen, we've had the pleasure of watching Mitch Cox across the course of this year. There's no mark that he sees he can't go for, and that was a big fly. Needed that contest. Ball back in. Callum Sinclair takes it out the rock, handballed short, smothered, flying shot on goal again, smothered. Brilliant work to keep the Franks and Dolphins at bay. Handball out. It was too hot for Skeen to run with. As the Dolphins look to get it back in, snapped around the body towards Reedy, who's worried out of it by Will Gould. And it's out over the boundary line, just left of the left behind post. Trying to pick out who... I think Connor Riley, Riley it is. Yeah. Connor Riley, who's a key for Franks and getting up limping on his ankle. You hope it's not one of those syndesmosis things that seem to be prevalent in footy today. For the second week in a row, uh, Liam Hiscock has had to uh, ditch his number 14 due to blood. He's now wearing 52 for those playing along. As the Dolphins try to break through, Newman right did handle. well. Got a hand pass out. Oh, spin it before he had it, Johnson. And missed a chance to have a last shot on goal for the quarter. And it is quarter time here at Avalon Airport Oval at Churnside Park. And the Frankston Dolphins will take a 10-point lead into the first break after a, after a very even and interesting start in which Frankston got the best of the scoring opportunities but weren't able to put it on the board. They lead three goals, 6-24 to Sydney, 2-2-14. Two, two, uh, goal scorers are Freeman, Lochnan and Voss for the Dolphins. For Sydney, Taylor and Ryan Clark have the majors. We'll take a break on our TV Magic Match of the Day with thanks to station sponsor Bendigo Bank. And when we come back, it will be Mick O'Neill and Jonty Ralph Smith to tell you all about that first term and predict what might happen in the second. This I'm, I'm Brendan Rhodes with Ollie Walker Peel and the two gentlemen I mentioned a minute ago back shortly on RPPFM, your Peninsula Footy. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solarheart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get Solarheart. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spithire for 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Everyone and welcome back to RPPFM's match of the day. Frankston here at quarter time lead Sydney 3 6 24 to 2 2 14. You'd have to say Sydney would be buoyed with this score line. They obviously got a couple on the bounce, but Frankston were able to hold them up when Sydney went forward early and probably had the majority of the territory. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, w w as we were calling the game half, I think Sydney kicked the last two goals. Did they, they did, yeah. So Frankston were travelling along nicely, they were holding up really strongly in their defensive end. And, and we had mentioned that um, Hayden McLean loomed as a as a 
difficult matchup. Well, Frankson have been able to identify that he's likely to be the, the, the tall target going inside 50, and I'm not sure he's taken a mark yet. Credit to the defenders and Max Williams for that matchup early. They were able to get the, the ball in the hands of their quality players later in the in the quarter, Sydney, and we saw Louis Taylor's goal was fantastic. We had Ryan Clark kicking a goal. They were just conversions you'd expect of AFL players, but, but in the conditions tonight that are a little bit slippery and cold, they were, they were quality conversions. Uh, Colin O'Reardon has uh, been the leading possession winner. What 